Okay, here we are in Unit 2 of AP Calculus. Uh, it's about differentiation, just the, the definition of it and some fundamental properties and rules. Um, this one is going to be similar to the last one, relatively short unit. Uh, we're going to go through the content and then do a few practice problems. Okay, uh, so what is a derivative? We're going to define a derivative based on limits. That's the entire reason we did unit one. So derivative is basically the instantaneous rate of change of a function at that point. Uh, and we say f prime of a, um, the derivative at that point is equal to limit as h approaches zero of f of a plus h minus f of a over h. Uh, so this one's pretty common. You should know it. It's called a difference coefficient. Uh, and what it basically says is that you take a point uh, let's say this is a quadratic function. You take a point A, uh, you take a very small value H because H approaches zero. You take a very small value H above it and you find the uh, slope of the secant line of that. And then you take that limit as H approaches zero. And as H approaches zero, it becomes a tangent line. It just intersects the function at X equals A instead of being a secant line. Uh, so that's how the limit works. More often than not, this limit's going to end up with being uh, zero over zero, but there are some manipulations you can do to fix that. Um, to get an actual value from it. Uh, and so there's a few other forms of the difference quotient. This one's the most common. So this one's the one you should mainly know. Um, like I said, it's the slope of the tangent line at that point. But you can write the derivative function of a function, like uh, a function that when you plug in an x value gives the slope of the tangent line at any point. So that's going to be f prime of x. Instead of uh, at the derivative at a certain point, it's going to be f prime of x. Um, and that's just going to be uh, also known as d dx of f of x. So this is another way of writing that. It's going to be equal to the limit as h approaches 0. And it's going to be the same thing, but you re replace a with x. And so uh, there's going to be quite a few variables in this one. It can get complicated when you're solving for the limit. Uh, but don't worry, it's always going to simplify to a nice value. Um, and you're going to get an actual function that is called the derivative of the original function. And like with limits, you can determine it graphically, numerically, uh, analytically. Uh, graphically, if you see a f like a graph, you can find the tangent line by drawing an approximate tangent line, calculating the slope of that, whatever. Numerically, you're given a table. You can calculate the average rate of change, which you should remember from pre-calculus, um, of an interval that's very close to what you're trying to approximate. And then analytically, I just showed you it's this limit definition. So just like how continuity is when the graph is continuous, uh, you can say a graph is differentiable if the derivative exists at a point. And the um, criteria for this, first, uh, f of x is continuous at c. So to prove this, you need that three-step process from before. So there's three hidden steps within this first step. You have to do that uh, if you're checking if it's differentiable or not. Second thing, limit as x approaches c of f prime of x exists. Uh, so you find the derivative of the original function, you find the, you see if the one-sided limits exist. And if they do, then the function is differentiable at that point. Just like with limits, there are a few important properties we need to talk about. First of all, the derivative of a constant is just zero. Uh, it's just going to be zero. Because if you have a constant line, then the slope is just zero. It's a horizontal line. Uh, the derivative of c times f of x is going to be c times f prime of x. So you just take the constant out. And finally, uh, you can add functions, uh, add or subtract, to be honest. And just like with limits, it's going to be f prime of x plus or minus g prime of x. Now, you might be thinking, what about product and quotient? We did that with limits. Can't we do that with uh, derivatives too? And we cannot. There are separate rules for those. It's not just going to be f prime of x times g prime of x. There's, it's a bit more complicated than that. And we'll get into that in this video, just not yet. Um, so with these properties, we can also have some derivative rules. Um, first of all is the power rule. So if you have the derivative of x to the power of n, where n is a constant, like 2x squared, for example, it's going to be equal to, you bring down the exponent, it's n times x to the power of n minus 1. You bring down the exponent, subtract 1 from the exponent, and that's your derivative. Second thing is the uh, product rule. I did hint at this a bit. It's d dx of f of x times g of x is equal to f prime of x times g of x plus f of x times g prime of x. You can prove this uh, using the limit definition. I'm not going to, obviously, but um, 
it's a good exercise dealing with the limit definition of a derivative um, and also deepening your understanding of this rule. Finally, the quotient rule. Uh, if you have f of x over g of x, this one's the most complicated of them all, uh, but it's basically going to be f prime of x times g of x minus f of x times g prime of x over uh, the denominator g of x squared. Uh, and in this one, order does matter because you have a subtraction over here. Here, you have an addition, so order doesn't matter. You can swap it and be fine. This one, make sure to actually memorize which order it is in. We're actually almost done with this unit. It's very short. Um, we just need to find the derivatives of many common functions. Again, I'm not going to prove them. I'm not going to derive them. You can using the limit definition of a derivative, but I'm just going to give you a list of functions you should probably memorize the derivatives of. Sine, um, you're gonna, it's going to be cosine. Uh, I'm just doing a function, then the error, then the derivative. I'm not writing the entire notation, which is d dx of sine x equals cosine x. I'm just function, arrow, derivative. Um, you should memorize these, by the way. If you have cosine, it's going to be negative sine. And this just forms a cycle. Uh, the derivative of negative sine is negative cosine. Derivative of negative cosine is sine. And it just continues on and on. Uh, tangent is where things get a bit interesting. It's going to be secant squared of x. And remember, secant is 1 over cosine. Uh, you can also do cotangent of x. That's going to be equal to negative cosecant squared of x. You might be seeing a pattern here. Um, when you're doing the cofunction of a certain function, it's going to be the negative and then the cofunction of the derivatives function inside. So this is cosine. You do the cofunction of cosine, which is sine, and the negative in front. This is secant. You do the cofunction of that, which is cosecant, and then the negative in the front. You can also do the same thing for secant. Uh, secant of x, the derivative of it, is going to be secant of x times tangent of x. And as you might imagine, the derivative of cosecant of x is going to be negative cosecant x cotangent x. And again, same thing with the cofunctions and negative sign. So that's trigonometric functions. Definitely memorize those. Some of them are easy to memorize, some of them not so much. Uh, but there's also exponential and logarithmic functions. Uh, e to the x, derivative of it is just e to the x. Uh, e is a special base for exponents because the derivative is just itself. That's one of the reasons why it's so special. You should remember um, e to the x from pre-calculus. not, review it quickly. It's very important in calculus. You can use this to derive the general form of a derivative for any base uh, exponent that's going to be the same thing but multiplied by ln a. And you can see if you plug in e into a, you're going to get e to the x times ln e, which is just 1. So e to the x uh, is its own derivative. Then we have natural logarithm of x. Derivative of that is 1 over x, surprisingly. Uh, and you can generalize that log base a of x. Derivative of that is 1 over x times ln of a in the denominator. Uh, so that's what you should memorize, a bunch of um, formulas. I know I just threw a bunch of properties, rules, and formulas at you. M try to memorize them, um, but yeah, you can derive them on the test if you really want to, uh, but it'll probably just save you a lot of time if you memorize them. All right, uh, so moving on to the practice problems. So this first one is an example of doing numerical differentiation. You're given a table and you have to find the, you have to approximate the derivative. Uh, in the previous video, we did um, an example of graphical limits. This one's gonna be numerical differentiation. So we're just trying out the different um, like uh, methods of doing these uh, things. So you have to find the approximate value of f prime, which is the rate of change at x equals 2. Uh, x equals 2 is here. So what you're going to do is you, you want the secant line because the tangent line is the exact value. The secant line is the approximate value. Uh, so if you were to graph it, you have 1, 6. Um, you have 2, 9, 3, 14, something like that. Uh, this, the tangent line is this. The secant line is this. So you're going to want to use 1 and 3 uh, as the two points in your secant line and just find the slope of that secant line. So that's just going to be f of 3 minus f of 1 over 3 minus 1. f of 3 is 14. Uh, f of 1 is 6 over 2 because 3 minus 1 is 2. So that's just 8 over 2 or 4. So your approximate uh, derivative would be 4. That's not going to be your exact one. It's going to be approximate. Okay, uh, and then here are two examples of equations or functions that we have to take the derivative of. It doesn't say that in the problem, but um, this won't be just an... AP exam question. They won't just give you an equation y equals x squared over phi to the uh, phi x to the 6 minus 1. They'll tell you, find the derivative, derivative of this. I just didn't include that in this problem. But 
find the derivative of this um we have y prime is another way of writing it it's f prime of x dy dx y prime uh, it all means the same thing so this one's going to be the quotient rule uh that means it's going to be f prime of x g of x so derivative of x squared that's product uh, power rule you bring the two down and subtract one so it's going to be two x to the power of one or just two x you uh have the function down here you bring that up then minus f of x times g prime of x, so x squared. And derivative of this is also going to be um, power rule. You bring the 6 down, multiply it with the 5 to get 30. Uh, and then you just subtract 1 from the exponent, giving you 5. Uh, and then you have a minus 1 that's a constant, so derivative of that is 0. So uh, this is um, going to be the numerator. Denominator is going to be 5x to the power of 6 minus 1 squared. Kind of ugly. Uh, let's simplify it but a bit. We have 2x times 5x to the power of 6, this is 10x to the power of 7, minus 2x. And then from here, we have minus uh, 30x to the power of 7 over uh, this one. You can expand it out. It'll be 25x to the power of 12 minus 10x to the power of 6 plus 1. That's just binomial theorem um, or binomial expansion. You just a plus b squared is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. You can just apply that here. You can simplify it a bit more, actually. There's a 10x squared and 30x squared here. Just subtract them. You get negative 20x squared minus 2x over 25x to the power of 12 minus 10x squared, uh, 10x to the power of 6 plus 1. That's going to be your derivative. Okay, and then for this last question, um, we see 3e to the power of 5. That looks like we should take the derivative of the function e to the x. That's a bit misleading, though, because e is a constant, and e to the power of 5 is just a constant. If it was e to the power of x, then yes, we would need to take the derivative of that. But e to the power of 5 is just a constant. It, you can plug it in your calculator, you get a value out of it. Then you're multiplying by 3, still a constant. So the derivative of that is just 0. Uh, very misleading. Um, a lot of students make mistakes like that, um, but it's just a constant. It's just going to be 0. All we care about is the second term. That's going to be product rule. We can say 4x times e to the power of x. So it's f prime of x times g of x. Um, derivative of 4x is just going to be 4 because uh, if you do 4x to the power of 1, you bring down the 1, still 4. Uh, 1 minus 1 is 0. So 4x to the power of 0 is just 4. Uh, e to the x it stays the same. And now we add f of x times g prime of x, so plus 4x times derivative of e to the x is still e to the x nice uh, function there and so y prime is equal to 4 e to the power of x plus 4 x e to the power of x you can factor it out if you want um you can factor out a 4 e to the x um it's a bit simpler that way if you have to solve something beyond that like solve when the derivative is zero you might want to do that but for now this is fine and uh, that's it for this unit we went over uh, what is a derivative and the basic formulas and rules you need to know for that. Next time, we're going to be talking more about derivatives, composite, implicit, and inverse functions specifically. So I'll see you in the next video.